having us. I will be the main speaker today. A pleasure introducing myself, uh, Hubert Parambouchard, uh, CFO of Radis and Mining Resources. I've been the company since uh, 2015 in several roles, and I'm CFO since uh, 2021. So Radis and Mining Resources is a is a, an exploration company uh, trading on the TSX Venture under symbol RDS and on the OTCQB under symbol RMRDF. <clears throat> the focus of Radisson is the former O'Brien uh, mine, renowned as the richest mine by grade in Quebec, having produced close to 600,000 ounces between 19, 1926 and 1957 at a grade of 15 grams per ton, so half ounce per ton. Current market cap of the company is around $60 million. We have $2.5 million, $2.5 million in the treasury, and uh, we're expecting to close a financing uh, shortly uh, this week on the November 17th, uh, bringing the treasury to $8 million uh, at year end. With 295 million shares outstanding, uh, the management and insiders of Radisson own close to 10% of the company, and that includes uh, director and strategic advisor Michael Gentile, who owns 6.8% of the company. <clears throat> In terms of institutional ownership, we have close to 21%, including Marshall Precious Metals, um, Conwave uh, Fund in Switzerland, US, U.S. Global in Texas, and in Quebec, we have the, the luck or and the opportunity to have several uh, funds, uh, paragovernmental funds, uh, implicated or involved in, in the exploration business. So that includes the CDPQ, the FTQ Labor Fund, uh, CDEX, and uh, Desjardins uh, Risk Capital. So for 21, around 21% uh, ownership, institutional ownership in the company. What's somewhat particular of, about Radisson is that we have a group of 35 investors that own close to 32% of the company. So in a sense, within 55 hands, we control around 62% of the uh, shares outstanding. So that leaves us with a, a public float of around 38%. So quite a tight float. Analyst coverage, uh, there's currently analyst coverage at Laurentian Bank and Aid Capital. Uh, in terms of management, I'm joined by Chairman uh, Denis, Lassan, Denis Lachance, interim and president CEO since, since September. Uh, Denis has more than 40 years of experience in mining, having held uh, several uh, executive roles, including with Extrata Nickel, Agnico Eagle, and uh, Noranda. Vivien Janvier uh, is our Director of Geology. Uh, Vivien has more than 10 years of experience in, in, in mining and exploration and holds a PhD in Structural Geology. I've introduced myself already. Um, we have Sylvain Edouard on the team, who's our uh, Environment and Sustainable Development Director. Uh, Sylvain has more than 30 years of experience in mining uh, having permitted multiple, multiple mines in multiple ju jurisdictions and having worked with the Ministry of Environment in Quebec as well. Christina uh, Pylon is the newest member of our team. She manages investor relations for Radisson since July and has more than 13 years uh, of experience in, in capital markets uh, uh, expertise. On the board of directors, in terms of governance, uh, and my ex experience in mining, Denis Lachance and Pierre Baudouin represents uh, our expertise, uh, the bulk of our expertise in mining. Uh, Pierre Baudouin is currently the CEO of uh, Silvercrest and was former CEO of uh, Detour Gold. In terms of capital markets, finance, reporting expertise, we have Michael Gentile, uh, um, a fund manager, Heavily involved in the oil and gas and, uh, and mining space, uh, both personally and professionally since uh, 20 years. And Jeff Swinoga, uh, uh, who is former CFO of Adbay and currently CEO of Exploits Discovery. Siri Jenik uh, is a lawyer by background. Uh, she is the chairman of our ESG committee. And Denis Bois uh, is our 
let's say, local director being based uh, close to the, the asset, uh, a geologist by background and having more than 40 years uh, of experience in mining and as a teacher at the uh, University of uh, Quebec in Abitibiti, Niskamay. <clears throat> so the project, uh, the O'Brien Gold project sits along the larger Lake Cadillac break. So that's 600 kilometers northwest of Montreal and 600 kilometers, kilometers north of Toronto. It's, uh, it sits on the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, so on the larger Lake Cadillac break. And it's a, it's a neo-archaeine neo high-grade uh, type of deposit, so a high-grade gold deposit. Uh, our camp alone has produced more than 25 million ounces of years of, of gold of gold over the last hundred years uh, and benefit we benefit from very uh, very good infrastructures so on that slide here you can see the paved highway 117 that connects Rouenaranda to Montreal and Rouenaranda to, Va to Val d'Or both both two two um, two of the main major pools uh, major mining pools in in, in in Canada you can see that the hydropower also passes on site uh, and here at the bottom of this slide, you can see current infrastructure. So that includes core shack and, and our head office, a former O'Brien mill, a storage for drill core, and a garage as well. Um, not two, two and a half kilometer uh, by bird view, you can see the Laron mill of Agnico Eagle, uh, currently uh, the deepest mine in North America at the moment with three point, at, with is still going strong at 3.2 kilometers depth. Uh, with all the infra these infrastructures and with an excellent location uh, halfway between two mining pools, we benefit from very advantageous exploration costs. So between 2019 and today, we've been drilling, actively drilling the O'Brien deposit at a rate of $150 per Cana Canadian per drill meter. So a very strong advantage for, for, for Radisson compared to its peers. On that slide, you can see the general location of the asset. So again, halfway between Rouenaranda and Val d'Or, 5.2 kilometer uh, of, of strike directly on the Cadillac break. And with all the infrastructures that I outlined on the previous slide, uh, also comes milling, milling opportunities. So we have more than five mills being operated by major companies uh, in, uh, within 75 kilometers of our asset that are not running at full capacity at the moment. So that represents future opportunity and potentially a lower capex uh, to de eventually develop a mine. So here we have a closer look on the uh, O'Brien asset. So the bulk of the work we've completed in recent years has been directly just south of the Cadillac break. So on the 5.2 kilometer corridor here that we own. But in 2020, we also acquired the new Alger uh, project. So that represents more than 50 square kilometer um, in the Pontiac sediments, just south of the larger Lake Cadillac break. And in 2022, we've started working on on this more, I would say, uh, earlier stage opportunity of the O'Brien project. So in over the next few slides, I'm going to focus of the, on the work we've done on the Cadillac break. And towards the end of the presentation, we'll discuss uh, new Alger uh, in further details. <clears throat> okay, so here we have a longitudinal section. So that represents a view from surface down to 2,000 meters uh depth uh underneath uh well on, on, under hurt so on that slide you can see the former o'brien infrastructures and the mined out stopes in gray in the left portion of that slide on the right portion of that slide you can see o'brien east so that's where we add back in 2019 a small resource around 430,000 ounces of gold Reading around nine grams per ton, um, just beside the old O'Brien mine. So at the time, the thinking was, well, we we see potential for more ounces. We think this could eventually become a mine, but we need to drill it. And the theory was that 
we could replicate potentially the former, the main infrastructures from the old O'Brien mine every 300 meters or so moving to the east. So we leverage the data on the old O'Brien mine and the data from our predecessor or previous management at Radisson in order to come up with uh, uh, not a theory, but uh, an interpretation that these main infrastructures, the three veins that had returned 90% of the production could potentially be repeated on these high grade trends moving every 300 meters or so moving to the east. So we embarked on a 20,000 meter drill program, eventually expanded it to 60 and completed the program back in 2022 to 127,000 meters. So we've invested more than $25 million on the asset and also acquired the O'Brien West or Thompson Cadillac portion. And here on that slide, you can see in the middle, the former O'Brien mine infrastructures to the West, the uh, the ground that we acquired back in 2020 and to the east the former resource uh, outline in, in in pale white and all these bubbles that you see here on that slide represents drill intercepts above uh, three grams per ton which would be a potential economic call cutoff uh, in in that type of deposit uh, currently in abyssinia so you can see that with the main objective of expanding the resource, we've been very successful uh, doing so uh, by the addition of drilling. And out of 127 kilometers of drilling in 256 holes, we've obtained more than 200 intercepts above three grams per ton. So that's a, a, a around a 75% hit ratio, which is exceptional in these type of uh, high grade deposits. So, on the basis of that drilling in March of this year, of 2023, we published an updated resource, um, expanding and doubling the footprint of the resource at the four and a half gram cutoff. We're now looking at the close to a million ounces of gold, evenly split between an indicated and inferred resources with an indicated grade of 10.6 grams per ton. So positioning O'Brien as one of the richest undeveloped projects in America. On that slide, you can see uh, the, uh, you know, the, the resource as it stands today. And we think there's much more potential to add ounces in parallel, uh, in parallel to addressing, you know, the development side uh, of the, of, of the project. So we've grown the, the project at around <clears throat> 3.1 ounce per drill meter for a discovery cost of $48 per, per ounce. And being live in the model, uh, we think we can do even better moving forward. So we've started in September a 10,000 meter drill program. And we think that so far we've proven that theory and results will be coming to market shortly. Uh, with the financing we just closed, uh, or we're expecting to close on Friday, uh, we'll be able to expand that drill program and also work on uh, additional meteorological testing, potentially economical study down the road for the asset. So we are reaching a very interesting point in the company's history and the project in history, in the sense that this project could eventually become uh, a mine in the non too distant future. And there's plenty of upside left uh, at O'Brien. I mean, you can see the bulk of what we just discussed is located on O'Brien East in a 1.2 by 1,000 by one kilometer corridor. But the project, the property is open for another 700 meters to the east. It's open to uh, by close to two kilometers to the west. And even the old O'Brien mine is open at depth below the O'Brien mine. So plenty of potential left and we'll be very active in, in the months to come. And we expect a very good news flow. So um, we, we invite you to, to remain aware of, of, the, of the drill results in coming months. In addition to, so everything we just discussed is focused on the larger like Cadillac break here. But in addition to that, we started to work the new algorithm portion of the asset. So back in 2022, uh, 
the geologists or the, the crew mapped the entire property. And they were able to identify a geological context similar to Canadian Malartic. Uh, Canadian Malartic is, um, <clears throat> is a mine that has been developed in the Pontiac sediments, just as, as, uh, as the ground we own here on the New Algar uh, portion of the asset. And Canadian Malartic was discovered in the beginning of the 2000s and has since produced more than 13 million ounces of gold. So defining, you know, a, a, a similar geological context here to Canadian Arctic was uh, an achievement in, in itself in terms of potential, but the team also found a boulder that graded 7.3 grams per ton gold uh, in the middle of, uh, in the, middle of the, the, the property. So after evaluating, you know, multiple uh, exploration techniques, we established that the best uh, work to, to, to be done in order to define the near surface potential for mineralization uh, on new algae was to do a till sampling uh, analysis. So by going directly at bedrock with either a shovel or an excavator, um, the team extracted what they call a basalt till and these uh, these till were eventually sent to uh, to the lab for multi-element analysis and gold grain counts. So right now we're waiting on the results for for phase one, and we'll see how uh, phase two will how the results will will translate in terms of future uh, exploration activities for for new algae. Uh, Hubert, it's, uh, you only have a couple of minutes left here if you want to wrap up to answer any questions from the audience. Yes, I'll wrap up and I'll be, it'll be my pleasure to, to, to answer a question. So bottom line, we're well financed. We have the right team. We have one of the highest grade asset in, in, in not owned by a producer in, in Canada. And, uh, and, uh, we have the right location with the right infrastructures. We're benefiting from advantageous uh, exploration costs. So I think it's a very interesting and compelling story to be, be following. Thank you uh, for your story here. So let's, uh, uh, let me uh, address a couple of questions here from the audience here. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, Ashan B, he says, asking about your, your cash position and do you need to raise more capital in moving forward? So as I mentioned, we uh, we are expecting to uh, to end the year with around $8 million in treasury. So we have a financing that is is on the verge of being closed. So that will cover our GNA for at least two years and our exploration work in the, over the next 12 months. Good. And the next one is asking about from risk asking about your ESG practices. How do you connect with the local communities in Quebec, in the region? Oh, maybe I can take this one. Uh, so personally, as a chairman of the board and interim chief executive officer, I meet with the local stakeholders on a regular basis. For instance, I'll be uh, in Abitibi uh, next month to uh, do a kind of a year. Uh, wrap up summarizing what we have accomplished in 2023 on site and with our uh, communities and then i will meet with the local uh, stakeholders the ones that are very close to us the ones that they belong to the different government agencies including including the native group that is uh, not far from us that is uh, just uh, north of amos the algonquins uh, with whom we are keeping regular contact so this is one example of uh, staying close to our stakeholders Great. Uh, final question coming from Lida here is asking: Are you will you look for any joint venture opportunities? Well, uh, obviously, like you read, I've said. I mean, uh, now we have the scale one million ounce. Uh, we have a, a good market cap now. Uh, our stock is uh, trading around twenty one cents, and we're going to be well funded for the next uh, year for the site works and with eight million in the bank. So clearly, I mean, we have been dragging attention from uh, small companies, but also from large companies. So there are effectively discussions happening as we see fit. Great uh, for your time, Dennis and Hubert, and for answering the questions and sharing the story. Uh, we're running out of time. I'll let you two go, but it's uh, great to 
hear the first time about Watterson Mining and its uh, project going. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you pleasure. for your time.